The Holy Gospel for this fourth Sunday of Lent comes from St. John, the third chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God." Here ends the reading of the gospel for this day. Would you please be seated? Well, I'm sure you've heard that there are two types of people in this world. I'm sure you've heard that simplistic way of understanding other people and the world around us. Maybe you've heard there are, there are two types of people in this world. Those who make things complicated and those who keep things simple. Maybe you've heard that there are two types of people in this world. Those who are on my side and those who are in my way. Maybe you've heard that there are two types of people in this world. Those who walk into the room and say, there you are. And those who say, here I am. Maybe you know that there are two types of people in this world. Those who are wise and those who are otherwise Or maybe you know the one from Mark Twain. There are basically two types of people in this world. Those who accomplish things and people who say they accomplish things. Uh, The first group is, is less crowded than the second. That overly simplified way of of understanding the world can be useful at times. Even human beings, with with all of our complicated emotions and behaviors in this world, at times we have to admit that that basic understanding of two different groups is really helpful at times. And it shows up in the gospel several times this morning. That we hear that there are those who believe and there are those who don't believe. We hear that there's the light, and we hear that there's the dark. We hear that there are those who are being saved and those who are perishing. That overly simplified view was helpful in the early church based on its context. Not as a way to try to exclude other people, but as a way to try to encourage those who had come to believe and maybe as a way to try to attract others to come to be a part of that early church. That early church was marked not as a part of the dominant culture, but as a very small minority who stood in opposition to that culture at large. Today, as we hear that message, I hope we'll think about how we classify different groups of people that we often create that us versus them, but how we can maybe rightly understand that there are insiders in the church and there are outsiders. I hope we don't look at those who are outside as enemies or opponents or people to be dominated but that we'll understand that there is a power to being a part of Jesus' ministry in this world, that there is an importance to being a part of what God is doing through Jesus Christ and doing through the church as we continue his mission in this world. 
Today, I hope you'll look at your life and think what it means to you to have heard that message of salvation and to have heard that call to be a part of those who believe and those who are being saved through Jesus' power and accomplishment. Well, it happened a while back, but, but one of my friend's kids came running into the house screaming, Dad, there's a snake in the yard. Maybe you've had that experience. They live on a canyon, and so uh, it's a common occurrence. It had happened many times before, and what my friend usually does is goes into the yard and picks up the snake, puts it in a garbage can, and, and then uh, walks down to the canyon down the street and, and lets it loose. But this time, when he walked out, he noticed something was a little bit different with this snake. He noticed there was a rattle on its tail. But he thought to himself that it was just a baby one, so he thought he would be okay if he just reached down, pinned its head down, and, and grabbed it. But, but when he reached down, of course, uh, the snake was too fast, or he was too slow, and, and it bit him right in the hand. He noticed things were pretty serious because his, his hand went numb almost immediately. Luckily, they, they lived just a few blocks away from Sharp Memorial, and, and he was in the emergency room in a matter of minutes. But as he felt uh, his hand go numb and then his arm go numb, and as he sat there waiting in the exam room to begin to receive treatment, he said the thought did cross his mind that if he died that day, things would be okay because he had lived a good life. He thought about approaching his own death. And without medical intervention, he, he would have died. It's his story of salvation, though. Maybe uh, you know it's good news. Uh, we have modern medicine, and, and he was able to get help, and he's alive. It's his story of being saved personally for him, where he had that moment where, where there was a realization and a recognition of death. And yet, he was saved. Maybe you've had that experience, or you know somebody else who has had that experience of they should be dead. But something happened and, and they still live. Today we hear that, that wonderful gospel in a nutshell is what Luther called it, or the gospel in miniature, that John 3.16, that most beloved and most well-known Bible verse, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have life, eternal life. We understand Jesus' work and mission, that Jesus comes as a Savior. It's one of the titles that we use in the church for Jesus. And so today, to understand Jesus and his work, maybe we can understand Jesus' power as a Savior what it means that he comes into this world to, to save you and I. And when Jesus talks about his ministry and his work, he uses that, that interesting story of salvation from the book of Numbers. That story about serpents and snake bites, where the people of God were, were plagued by poisonous serpents and were dying. And that Moses crafts that bronze serpent and lifts it up. Jesus uses that story to talk and to teach and to explain his ministry. And he says that he's come to save God's people too. That just like that serpent that was lifted up, so too he's going to be lifted up. And that people will find salvation when they look upon him. Today, I hope you've come to understand the power of knowing Jesus and the power of his death and sacrifice. That his death on the cross brings life and, and forgiveness. 
But I hope we hear something more. That it's not just that favorite Bible verse that we enjoy and celebrate and remember. But that Jesus wants us to share that message. That we in the church who have received that good news of the gospel need to go out and and help other people to hear that message. Well, when my friend was bitten by a snake, he, he learned something. He, he changed. He had a transformation. He learned he was no longer going to handle snakes anymore. He learned that there were two kinds of people in this world, those who uh, play with snakes and, and those who don't play with snakes. I hope we'll learn uh, the power of, of what it means to be in that group who knows Jesus. And that we'll experience the change and transformation that come in our lives because, because of Jesus' saving power. And that our lives will be changed and transformed and we too will be sent out with a mission. That we have a message in the church today. I hope you'll think about the people in your life who, who are struggling I hope you'll think about those in your life who are suffering and need to hear a message of hope, a message of forgiveness, a message that there is a Savior. It's that hopeful message that brightens our day and brightens the future that the church goes into the world with, that in this world of darkness and death, we go out into the world with light and life. Not because we know how to accomplish that, not because we're able to bring it about in people's lives, but because we know one who is. May we join together in, in our work together. And as we go out, may we not see other people as, as obstacles or enemies, other people as difficulties to be overcome, but as people who need to hear that message as people who are in darkness and need to be enlightened. Our work in sharing the light of Christ with the world is that work of enlightening. It isn't always easy to know how to share that message and how to help other people to experience that power and presence of Jesus. But today I rejoice for the work of this community and for all that we do together to make Christ's light known. All that we do, not to go out and just tell other people, but to be light in this world. To have God, as it says, work through us. That it is the power of Christ in us that goes out into the world through our ministry. May we bear witness to Jesus and his transforming power that he truly has come as a Savior. And may we share our story, not, not of snake bites, not of the power of, of those other forces that overwhelm and destroy, but the power of Jesus to make us whole and to bring us to life. And this week, as always, may the Holy Spirit Direct your hearts and minds to the love of God, made known in Jesus Christ. Amen.